about changing the angle, it's never a good idea to just like try to shove her legs where I want them. That won't work on someone that knows what they're doing. Instead, I'm going to like shuffle one way and I'm going to use this. Now it's easy to get past it to where I want to be. Notice also I'm grabbing on the shins. In gi, we like these grips. Uh, in no gi, the shins are a little bit better. Uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to think about kind of restricting this leg from coming in as I start dropping in like that. I want my hips to end up hitting right about there. Going here, here, and my hip starts coming in. At the same time, I'm pushing this leg back. I might even switch my hand in here to start pushing it back so that I can land and block it from coming back. My leg, I like to hook right here, restrict your ability to trim. I'm taking a low underhook, and then I'm gonna use that as I come in for an underhook or a cross face finish like normal. So from the beginning we're shuffling, shuffling here, here. So this is an option when you're going for the knee slice, but they see it coming in time and they fight and get the underhook. Right? So obviously if I just complete the knee slice from here, she's gonna take my back. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take advantage of the fact that this is nogi. I'm gonna swing my hips that way because she can't really stop me. There's no belt to grab, there's no pants to grab, right? So I'm coming around this way. I'm trying to push her shoulders down to the mat with my weight as I do that. I don't want her coming up to her knees. So here, come from knee slice, she gets the underhook. I'm gonna think about running my weight this way as I swing my hips around. There. I'm punching my arm deep for the darts, and I'm gonna lock it up just like we've been talking about in Nogi. Here, row, or the middle. Uh, key details in this, I really wanna end up with my hips almost like 180 degrees. So I start here, I wanna end up like almost over here. And that's just so she can't chase me and take my back. So shuffle, here, she gets the underhook. I'm gonna think about swinging myself around as I punch this through and collapse her underhook. I'm gonna, of course, make sure that my neck isn't on her shoulder. I want my chest on her shoulder. I'm gonna punch this through, lock it up, cinch it back, get to 90 and finish, or go to mount for an even stronger finish. So this is another good option. Uh, it can work if she has the underhook, but it can definitely work if she's giving me some knee pressure. So here, here, I'm coming through for the knee slice again. And as I stuff this leg back, she's trying to like nudge me forward. What she's trying to do is to get me to come up like this so she can come up into a single leg. That's a very good counter. So you need to have an answer to it. One of the things that I'm gonna be doing, is that if I feel that pressure, is I'm gonna let my weight kind of flop. And again, this can work even if she already has an underhook. It doesn't really matter. I'm gonna put my weight down on her shoulder. Then I'm gonna take this part of my foot and put it right here. That's what's gonna let me get to the saddle position without her catching me and putting me uh, down and taking top position. So I'm going here, here, through, tight. And once I'm here, we're in what I, I call topside saddle. I still have tons of leg lock options. And at any time, I can go back to the dars. I can go just to a knee slice. And there's even back take options. So if she's trying to come up to her hands, uh, I can uh, come for back take from there. So one more time on that. I'm coming for the knee slice. She's not giving it to me the way I want. So I'm gonna come here, here. I put my weight on my hands and on her shoulder, make it really easy to take this foot off the mat. One, two. Then once I'm here, I can go for leg locks and go for darces. And move back to the distance. Um. 